All right, hello everyone. My name is Isli Sun, and welcome back to the channel. We're doing a little something different. You may notice that there is gameplay of me playing some Cold War zombies, more specifically the map D Machine underneath. But I'm not doing any of the playing. Hands up, you can see me shooting on screen, and I'm not doing any of that. This is footage that I've already recorded beforehand, and I felt like instead of just chopping it up, instead of me leaving it like this where I just give you the blank gameplay footage, I felt like this one deserved a little bit of the decent commentary treatment, if you will. So this is me debuting a little brand new segment for each and every one of you, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time now actually. Whether with the face cam, whether with just my audio, something where I you just get to talk to with each and every one of you. A little update on life, talk about anything that I want to talk about, um, whether urgent, urgent just for me, something like that, something I just want to shoot the breeze with, with my friends, my family that watch, and my fans, you know, something nice, something cool. So besides that, I would be also discussing the gameplay that's going on underneath. So the funny thing about this is that, as you notice, this is a uh, 30 plus gameplay on D Machine on Black Ops Cold War. I have the nerd stuff enabled, as you can see on the top left. The stuff that shows the frame rate, the GPU temperature, the clock, the GPU time, the CPU time, how much VRAM is being used, and then the time that it was while I was recording the gameplay. So, yeah, that's something I like to do. In my off time, I just like to play Cold War Zombies. Mostly just the machine, actually. I've been saving the other maps for my first time playthroughs for a long time now. I just haven't gotten around to them. I haven't made up my mind yet if I'm going to stream them, if I'm going to do a long video where I cut up some of it and then do the rest of the maps that I have not yet played in order. So here we go. If you have not played the machine as much as I have, because honestly, Let's say, if we were going to do it in percentages, 10% of the time I've played Cold War was for multiplayer. I will say 3% by myself, 7% with your boy Jake, and then the rest of the 90% has been to Dime, dime a Shine. <laughs> the, yes, the American pronunciation, not the German one. So I have played this map religiously. If you have seen my Steam, if you are following me on Steam as a friend or, or something like that, or if you have come across my Steam page, you will know that I have over a hundred hours synced into Cold War, and most of those hours are pretty machine. That's how much I enjoyed this map, to be honest. It's been fun. It's been my goal at the moment, when I have nothing much going on, to get all the upgrades as much as I can get myself that dark matter camo which is gonna be a lot of work I don't know how long it's gonna take me because I have to not only level up every other weapon fully so that's everything assault rifles like machine guns special weapons melee weapons sniper rifles um, what else? pistols Tactical rifles, I don't know if I'm missing any out. Oh yeah. Some stuff that you will notice, I have never seen the ray gun in the Dark Aether before, so I had to take a little double take while I was moving around to see if this was real or not. This is the perk arrangement that I like to run around with when I'm doing these, uh, when I'm trying to get to high rounds by myself. I like to do Jug first. As much as possible, I either do Elemental Pop or uh, Death Perception second, and then after those two, either Deadshot first or Speed Holder first, and then everything after that, I can mix and match. So stamina, PhD Slider, Mule Kick, everything else. I just got the brand new MG, which needed me, which needed me to do... Tesla Storm kills with the LMG. That's why I was doing a bunch of that. During that. Really cool, really fun. It was a nice little challenge, honestly. It took longer than I thought it would, but. 
uh, most of the other games I was playing before this were a bunch of stinkers, to be honest. My usual strategy for D-Machine is to stay in the starting area until round 14. By then, I would have racked up a minimum of 40,000 points. And then after that, I would go through the remnants of Noct. I will go to the power station. I will get everything going when it comes to building the pack punch. I have not tried building anything else on this map, honestly. I have not tried looking for the the Aether Wave uh, transmitter. I have not tried looking for the the IE. I think it's called the the Q IE, whatever the heck else, other equipment or special things to the map I can get that is craftable, either by looking around the map or by um, going into the dark either. So yeah, I don't know what your guys take on zombies is, because I've never really done this before, where I've discussed uh, Call of Duty Zombies to you guys. It's part of my childhood, to be honest. I was a Call of Duty boy growing up. I didn't get into YouTube until I was in the 6th grade. I don't know if I've ever told this story before. If I was in computer shops back in the day before I got my own PC at home, I was not that big into watching other content creators yet. I was there to play with friends, play Left 4 Dead 2 co-op, play um, Counter-Strike co-op, stuff like that. You know, if you've never seen a computer shop in uh, Southeast Asia or anywhere wherever you live, uh, whatever it might be called, like a PC cafe, um, a gamer station, whatever else it might be called in your neck of the woods, basically it's just you and a bunch of friends or a bunch of strangers sitting next to each other, you might be playing World of Warcraft, you might be playing uh, the brand new Red Dead Redemption, you might be playing um, Modern Warfare 2, something like that on each other's PC. There was a whole lot of range and a whole lot of piracy going on in those days, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yes. This is what I like, some spontaneity. I have no script, I have no bullet points laid out for this, so I'm just riffing on whatever is coming up to my mind. So back to the YouTube thing. Uh, once I got my first PC in the 6th grade, that was back in 2012. So technically, if I did not upgrade my PC this year, the PC would still be somehow rocking strong for 12 years. Almost half of the time that I've been alive, which is kind of crazy. This PC has been with me through a lot. Through the early days of my YouTube, where I just tried making RPG Maker games because that's the only thing my PC can handle. And I didn't and couldn't cheese the system with how I'm doing it right now when it comes to video recording. Sound again. It's interesting, um, the system for Cold War, honestly. Uh, for example, that much you had like, let's say 8 or 9 perks, and then when you go down, you get to keep like 3 or 4. It's okay. You don't lose all of them. Not that big of a headache. So, when I talk about headache, it's these uh, Megaton guys. <laughs> There's something else. They're, they get really annoying after a while, especially in these higher rounds, the 30s, the 40s. I have not. Actually, I don't remember if I made it in the 50s for this one. We'll get there when we get there, we still have over an hour <laughs> to talk with each other. But yeah, that's my journey of getting into the outside world when I got my own PC, when I found out the little streaming platform known as YouTube, when I found out people did this as a side hobby or a thing for a living. I always fancied myself as someone that would want to do this full time as well changed a lot so much since um, the days that I first saw YouTube. Instead of making multiple channels for certain content, instead of going to different platforms for different kinds of content, for streams, for um, short form videos, for long form videos, for discussion videos, for anything that might discuss anything copywritten or anything like that. Now, as much as you can and as much as you can edit, you can do it. 
on YouTube. Pretty cool. After all this time, YouTube still holding on, holding strong. You will get to see in this gameplay the most downs I've ever had in a match. The longest I've ever played for a match. As honest, I was not really feeling to record um, any Cold War Zombies. It just came to me like, I'm kind of getting up here in the uh, in the rounds. So, without jinxing myself, let me try to play a good game and see where it takes us, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, I loaded up with the MG42, I think it's called. Or no, the MG60. The 42 is the little thing that I just unlocked earlier. This is the main LMG that I'm trying to level up in its class. I don't know how I'm getting away with these. I hunkered down and I locked in for this game <laughs> as best as I could. All the near falls and the close calls, I don't know how many exactly, but you'll, you'll see it. I think there's one where I get like 4 health or something like that, something ridiculously low and I do not get hit somehow. Which is... Amazingly lucky, crazy lucky, even for me. Because I fancy myself at least adept to playing zombies. Because I have played almost every map going through it. Of course, I was not playing uh, World of War when it came out. I didn't play Black Ops 1 when it came out. But I did go back to World of War when my friend had it on her Wii. I was also able to play it on the PS3 and on the Xbox 360. Um, the first real zombies game that I really got into was um, Black Ops 1 Black Ops 2 for the PS3 as well. Before I made bigger moves when I came to the PC and all that. That was very risky when I just did. Especially with no PhD slide or anything like that. I felt like I'm risking it for the biscuit. If we're thinking about it honestly, um, for World at War, my favorite zombies map is Verrucked or Shinonuma. Those are my two favorites. I, it, it, it depends on the day. You have to ask me uh, which one I like more. At the moment, if I were to give just one answer, I think definitively Verrucked is my favorite as of now for World at War zombies maps. For Black Ops 1, honestly, Five. I did not get to play all of the DLC in its heyday. I bought one of those packs. There you go, lovely little stuff. I did not have to. That was a godsend right there. I did not get to play all the DLC for Black Ops 1. I want to own it, honestly. Something happened with Plutonium where they are no longer little hosts for you to be able to play everything from Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. You now have to get the actual games. <laughs> And then they will just serve as a different um, hosting site for the multiplayer co-op matches. But yeah, I didn't even know that that happened. So yeah, rip plutonium to that. Basically for Black Ops 1, the only maps that I have played are Kino, 5, Dead Ops Arcade, and in, in the, I'm speaking of the heyday, so like when I still had the PS3 only, not in the more recent times when I was able to play it when plutonium was so good. <laughs> so those three, yeah. Because I wasn't even able to play Ascension. The pack that I bought for Black Ops 1 for the PS3, it had the Ascension DLC pack in it. But I guess it was past its sell-by date because when I tried inputting the code into the PlayStation Store, was not giving me any of the maps, no ascension, no multiplayer maps. I was like, okay, bummer. No ascension for now. If we were to include the plutonium timeline, I have not played them that much. But, to be honest, Call of the Dead. Call of the Dead is one of those maps that has escaped me for so long when I was able to play it for plutonium, for spin the wheel, make the deal, and then sometimes afterwards with uh, Jake. I love it, very fun. And a little bias because it's our introduction to Event Sevenfold into Zombies. I don't know how you guys think of Event Sevenfold, but I love Event Sevenfold. Even their latest album, Life is But a Dream. I waited on that. I loved it. 
love you with Sengbo from a nobody to we love you to now a cosmic great album honestly they did tease a little cheeky thing where they passed by Southeast Asia but only one uh, country so they're teasing that they might come in my neck of the woods and I will be ready for if that I'm done alright so going back to zombies for Black Ops 2 same with uh, Black Ops 1, the Black Ops 2 um, copy that I got for PS3 had a little DLC in it and it actually worked so I was able to play Die Rise so the only maps that I was able to play were Transit, its subsidiaries of Farm, Town, sometimes Diner if I could find people to play turned with me and then Die Rise so we were just lump in those all together. Die Rise is my favorite. I like Die Rise over Transit. It is a hot take for me that I think Die Rise is one of the better um uh what's the name of their group? Um, it's a Maxis group, whatever the the group with the Molten and um uh, Misty, Rusman and uh, Stu. I don't remember the name of their team, but oh, Alpha Omega or just Omega? I don't remember. Something like that. And then if you include the stuff with the plutonium, where I was able to play more of the maps, buried. As much as I say I love Marvel of the Dead, honestly, honestly, buried is really fun. Buried is so cool; it's not even funny. <laughs> the cheese that you can do on that map with the uh, the purifier, the bank, with Leroy. I miss it, honestly. If Activision get their poop together, I might be able to play again those two great uh, Black Ops games soon. But at least I get to have the two great modern Black Ops games in 3 and Cold War for me to fall back on whenever I want to get my zombies fixed. So for Black Ops 3, if we are not counting Zombies Chronicles, my favorite among the newer line maps would have to be Revelations. I absolutely love Revelations. Another hot take for some people. Revelations is a great map for me. It ties all the story up in a nice little bow and did most of the stuff that Origins did. and. Revelations just has a nice spot in my heart, honestly. That um, Easter egg song that it has on that map, that and the orchestral version is beautiful, honestly. This is cute as well. Because if I remember correctly, Elena was on um, The Gift, along with Maluka and Sher uh, Sherwood, yeah. And I think um, Elena sings the elemental uh, pop theme. Don't quote me on that though because I have not searched that up yet. But I that's one of my favorite um, newer perk themes. That's in a whole nother discussion as well. So if we include Zombies Chronicles, one of my favorite um, remasters, remakes, whatever you call it, would definitely have to be um, uh, okay. This might take a little thought. I love Kino, I've sunk a lot of hours in the Kino, both in Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3. Thinking of Shangri-La Moon, honestly, for Zombies Chronicles. I think you have to come back to me again, once again. Same with, um, Verrucht and Chino for World at War. For the moment, I will say Shangri-La. Another hot tech map for some people. But I enjoy the scenery, I enjoy its difficulty. I enjoy the new zombies that it adds, and I enjoy the wonder weapon in it as well. The DG3, the little baby maker, you know. For Black Ops 4, I have not played all of those maps because you know what happened with Black Ops 4 and what they tried making with it. Sadly, I didn't get into the Blackout era because I could not afford, obviously. PlayStation Network, PlayStation Gold, whatever it's called for um, PlayStation Plus, I think, for me to be able to play online with it. All these years later, I found out that uh, M Shadow is one of 
one of my guys from Avenge, the, the lead singer was a skin, one of the operators, I was pissed when I found that out. Um, that aside though, I have only played the free maps, and if I remember correctly there is two or three free maps? You have nine, yeah, it's three. You have nine and Voyage of the Dead, which includes the newer crew. And then you have Blood of the Dead, which includes um, young Richtofen and the gang. For that one, that's how much I sank into Black Ops 4, mostly into the um, zombies. Because I couldn't play multiplayer in Black Ops because I didn't have PS Plus. There was no campaign on the game, but it was not a detriment because as long as the game has zombies in it, I will definitely try and get my hands on it to play it. With that being said, if I were to narrow it down, I didn't enjoy Voyage of the Dead that much. I thought it was too hard, even for me. Um, uh, so, Nine or Blood. Honestly, Nine. Nine was really good with the uh, thematics of it, with the mythology. Not even just one thing of the, uh, the um, theology. Um, mythology. They had Greek, they had Roman. They had Egyptian, the other one I don't remember at the moment, I might flash it up on the screen sometime soon. But all those themes, all those little um, things in the arena, all those little uh, throwables that they had, pretty cool, honestly. I don't know how- whoa! <laughs> I forget about that. I got screwed with that. They didn't, make, didn't let me uh, jump over that guy. Um, I don't know how much the community thinks about the maps because most of when I think of, or most of when I hear of Black Ops 4, I hear of the community not really liking it that much. But hopefully, people like 9 as much because 9 was really good, honestly. Give 9 its flowers, you know? And now, for Cold War, the most recent, I'm not counting the Modern Warfare that has zombies in it for some reason, but apparently, it continues some of the story from Cold War, which, okay. I might be intrigued because, for example, if it's as good as the machine, maybe I saw a little gameplay of it. I don't even remember the map, but it looked kind of cool. It, it just looks like the, the modern warfare zombies, the newer one. It looks like an extraction point that they made all foggy, that they made all um, Fallout glowing sea like, and just stuff zombies in it. There's objectives and stuff like that, and it's not really super round based, like, from what I saw. So. Even though it is zombies on the surface, it's made by Activision and I think it's made by Treyarch, I have no idea. Probably not by the same team that's been making everything all these uh, years. But yeah, hopefully for a not so high price, we'll be able to play uh, the new zombies. Maybe even the uh, the Gulf War stuff, I am I still don't know how I feel about that honestly. Um, there was something my friend uh, Jake mentioned that there's an equality. I think that's coming up this year actually, the Ghost War thing. I have not heard anything about it though, <laughs> since I heard the confirmation of it, so we'll see how that goes there. That's killed. So yeah. Cold War, I can't really give an opinion yet, because I haven't played the other maps yet, and I've only played the Machine and Dead Ops. And obviously, as nice and nostalgic and retrofitting um, Dead Ops is, I'd give it to the machine. This is my this is my jam. Even though they changed a lot, I know. Even though you can make your own loadout, you're not hampered to only bringing a pistol with you. You can bring an LMG with you off the bat, stuff like that. You can bring um, a gun with attachments fully leveled up already, which. Of course, to it, um, it's kind of cheese. But honestly, I prefer that to picking and choosing your perks already, like what they did before, which I didn't think was horrible, honestly. But it's kind of cheap, honestly. He's down. What they did with uh, the perk system before. I was not totally soured on it, but I was not totally for it either. Heh, <laughs> got down to supper. Look at that, we're almost up to the 40s. 
The 40 sometimes feel like a little slog, but that's the ride that I sign myself up on, so I don't mind really. We are left with Chug and Death Perception as of this moment. If I remember correctly, the total number of downs that I got, it's either 9 or 12 for everything. <laughs> It's just kind of crazy thinking about it. <laughs> Speaking of kind of crazy, nice timing. Look at that. This is so stupid. <laughs> I might clip this, honestly. Look at this dude. Look at this dude earlier. Can't make up his mind. Can't make up his mind. If he wants to jump up or if he wants to uh, walk up, you know, there you go. Funny made up his mind. I let him jump up and I let him fall back down. <laughs> So yeah, when I first played uh, Cold War Zombies, I was really thinking about it like, cool, yeah? You get your normal zombies, they sprinkle in these brand new hellhounds that are toxic. They sprinkle in the armored zombies in higher rounds. They also bring in the Megaton Big Boy. I don't know how it is going to be in the later maps. I've seen the screenshots from what the Cold War menu likes to show me sometimes, and uh, I'm excited, honestly. The big boys, I don't know what to describe them as. The big creatures that don't even resemble people that turn into zombies. Big lab type creatures that were experimented on some shit like that, you know? Alright. What else would I like to talk about? Honestly, 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 thank you all so much for the support these past few months. I got um, one of those anniversary stories the other day and when I saw it, it almost brought a tear to my eye because a few days ago when I looked at it, it said that I was rearing up for the channel to reach 500 subs. We were at like 450 something at the time. And then a year later, we are almost at 2200. That's unfathomable, honestly. I never thought that I'd get this far, I never thought that we would be approved for monetization, I never thought we would be on the precipice of me making a schedule to not only make videos but the stream as well, to make the custom content for the the membership, the channel membership, the channel membership is honestly like a favorite dream of. I had to make a brand new list and ranking system for them so there is more than just one if you would like to do it you can click the join button starts at 4.99 a month or 129 if you are paying with philippine pesos you know that's something that i didn't understand full on because i assumed that for example if that is the amount that i'm choosing in my money if I were to convert it in a different currency, then that's how much it would be for a friend, a family member, a fan who would be interested abroad. But apparently that's not the case. It's currently fixed at um, $4.99 if you're in the US. So, very interesting. It is obviously $129 if you convert it right now. I think that's like a little over $2 still. From what I heard from my friend James, because um, I, I just got a call with him. We were playing some stuff with the boys, you know, discussing and shooting the breeze. He was telling me that um, the other two face of finally went down a little. You check that right now, actually. I have my phone here charging at the side. I think I still have the currency app that he gave me. I'm gonna load real quick. So. One a downer. Yeah, just a little. Just on that. I think it was close to 60 a few days ago. Now it's like hovering near 56, 57, which is still high, obviously with the inflation going on. I don't know how y'all are dealing with your inflation. I know how Jake's been dealing with it in the states. I know how some of my friends here in the Philippines have been uh, dealing with it. Obviously it's not fun, but you know what can you do? Because you gotta take it a day at a time, you know. Can't do nothing about it, but wait, really. 
Wait for the system to get it back together. Wait for the economy to get good, you know. <laughs> So, I've been thinking about it. The stream, um, the problem with the whole streaming thing is, since I still live at home, I usually still adhere to my mother's time, and for some reason, lately, she does not recognize me recording as that much of a priority. She will sometimes still speak to me even though I'm speaking to the camera. For this type of moment, I have the door closed, so it's very okay, obvious. <laughs> but um, for normal times, like during the day, I have it open just to have a little fresh air, just a little um, additional light coming into the room besides the ring light, besides something, whatever is going on at my windows at any given time of the day. It's, it's it is what it is. What can you do? I, uh, I'd say it's annoying. I'd say it's a, a nuisance sometimes, but. What can I do? Um, renew someone's beliefs at certain points in their life, you know? Can't really do everything for everyone, you know? So, I have to be able to adjust. I have to be the one to do it. Because, for example, if I set it at a certain schedule, I have to make it a point to make that habitual and to make it regular. It has to be something that does not make me feel lazy or make me take time away from my other things that I have going on. Besides the whole um, upload schedule that I'm trying to adhere to, I've also been learning languages on the side, I've also been trying to get more work on the side, I've also been um, fixing up my spirituality my faith, my roundedness, that's something that I've been lacking with um, ever since I got busy with school and working in school. Something that I put on the back burner. Besides the YouTube thing, besides um, meeting with friends, besides my own happiness, you know, I had to prioritize all of that. But I'm not going to get into a rant about that. Not yet, not today. Because that's definitely a story for another time. And that's not something that I would like to publicly discuss for the moment. But yeah, thinking about the schedule, maybe on an upload day, maybe a Tuesday, a Thursday, maybe a Sunday, thinking about it. Who knows? I'm thinking as well what I will be streaming first because I want to stream on Pokemon. I think I have Scarlet. I don't know if I have Scarlet or Violet. <laughs> I forgot already. It's been a while since I touched that game. Actually, no. The last game that I touched was Ar Arceus, Arceus Legends. That game slapped so much. And I just got so busy. And I've been prioritizing uh, Red Dead for the Switch that I have not gotten the chance to finish it yet. But I could do a new game. I could um, finish it with all y'all because that game is fun, honestly. I could sink hours and hours into it kind of crazy and I might just do that that might Pokemon games definitely not off limits but I'd have to I don't know I'd have to do research about that as well probably I don't know if uh, Nintendo is still lax on their policies when it comes to uh, content creators and their games because I remember um, finding out that it's not as strict as it once was but at the same time it's still Nintendo they might um, wait for years down the line to copyright strike me and stuff like that so yeah, gotta be safer than sorry good thing my super mario party video is still up <laughs> you know that's something that i found cool as well with the cold war zombies thing the rampage inducer it makes even like round two hard <laughs> because they're already aggressive they're already running around they're being like this they're being all crazy I can't imagine doing that whole thing. That, that might be a challenge for the future, honestly. Doing the Rampage Inducer from what it says um, until round 55. If I will get a good deal for this. Because obviously, 
I have a long way to go still, even though I'm making it up to the 40s now. I'd obviously like to be able to get up to the 50s, maybe even to the hundreds. I think that's possible, honestly, especially with the cheese that you can do in Cold War, as is. There's, there's nothing else you can um, add on. I don't think there are other wonder weapons. Could be wrong though, obviously. We have the, the black hole grenade things. We have our good old monkey bombs. You have your score streaks as well. The score streaks are fun on this game, zombies. First time I saw that, I was on the fence about it a little bit. I was like, it's kind of weird. But Black Ops score, um, score streaks are always so fun. I did not plan that out. Honestly, I have not seen this footage since I recorded it. Wow, what a good time. <laughs> so yeah, here's one of the score streaks, the aforementioned score streaks, the freaking chopper gunner. Chopper gunner and zombies, I would have never thought I'd see the day, but this is hilarious. Killing all them zombies, I even got a, a gold achievement for killing both of them, which I didn't even know. I hit both of them that good, you know? That's how much damage you can do with the chopper gunner. It's disgusting, honestly. <laughs> Makes you feel untouchable. Untouchable, untouchable. It's something that I've been finding myself doing as well. Random songs just pop into my head now. Even though I haven't been listening to the artist in a while, even though I don't know the lyric or the name of the song at the moment. I don't know that's the only part that I remember that little popular little chorus. I don't remember the song its name. I possibly does uh, Breaking Spirit it sounds like Breaking Spirit songs. I don't know. The song that I miss listening to at the moment is uh, Overprotective. That song's cult. That and um, Fuji Kaze's cover of it, really good as well. <laughs> One of my favorites from his um, second cover album. Alright. That's a little missed out thing, too. I guess while we're a little bit on the topic, on the concerts. The Ben Seven Fold, they might come next year, we never know. Corey Taylor was supposed to come this month, actually May, but he had to cancel. But he's going all over uh, Europe now. <laughs> um, the 1975 came here two days in a row, 2023, I believe. I was not able to go either. It really broke my heart for a while. Because I was so close yet so far to them. A couple of other artists as well. Harry Styles was here as well. My cousins was able to see them, happy for them. I was asking them to buy me some merch too, but didn't have any money to give them for them to buy it for me. And obviously I didn't expect them to use their money for me. <laughs> so that's another thing I miss on the Arctic Monkeys too. I don't even know if they're ever coming back to the Philippines. Their first ever time in the Philippines three years ago. Or the car. Sorry for that either. Yeah, that's the only thing that I do not like about living in Baguio, being far away from the Enemies usual down. convention, concert halls, events, you know. One thing I'm thankful for about Baguio is um, Hexcon, my goodness gracious. No, Hexcon, yeah. Hexcon is actually a positive. The, the one that I'm thinking of that's a negative is Conquest. I've never fully discussed this in a video before, I might still do it, but it's been over a year, I think, now? Or it might be a year now? I don't even remember exactly when it happened. But me, James, uh, Ryle, Zidane, went down to Manila, specifically Pasay, um, SM MOA, for an anime hobby event, which was three days long. We were not able to go the first two days, obviously, because it was school days, a work day for me. And uh, I had the bright idea to already get us tickets so that we would be a sure thing to get there. We would drive in James's car so we didn't have to commute. We would just have to um, talk about gas, talk about um, navigation, who'd sit in front, who'd do the DJ, stuff like that. And then. Once we would get to the middle, we would go to a certain place to meet some friends first. And then once you meet them, we would 
pick them up and take them to the event hall with us. On paper, sounds like a fun time, right? I'll go there on a Saturday night, get there on a Sunday morning, enjoy the festivities the whole Sunday, and then get back to Baguio in time for school slash work on a Monday. Very crazy thing that I did. During that time as well, uh, so there was a little bit of time that I was during the days when my dad first got seriously hospitalized. There were two times I got hospitalized. One, he was able to come home and hang around the house a little bit for it, recovering the best that he could. And then the second time he got hospitalized was the time he didn't get to, get to come home anymore. It was a sad thing, honestly. Because there were times during that second admission where he was the one trying to get himself out of the office. Uh, out of his... Um, room rather she was telling my mom stuff like it's time to go home and we, we can go home already we can uh, get my clearance stuff like that and then uh, they would let me fix the house they would let me go buy them dinner and then when they went to get the clearance they'd be like we didn't clear um mr lapson i don't know he has to stay a little longer for the tests to go through and for the additional medication to go through is what it is, yeah? So yeah, that's the time frame of when I went down. Took it as a little opportunity to get my mind off of those uh, little worries and my dad approved, so it was a little homecoming I guess because my dad is from the Manila area. My mother's side is the one that's here, born and raised Baguio. My dad came all the way from Manila met my mom here in the city and that's how I came to be, all that good stuff. So getting to see a little bit of what my dad used to see every day was cool. Because sometimes whenever he'd have road trips to other places I'd be busy with school, I'd be busy with something else, you know. So I was never really able to go with him when he went on those trips. Um, yeah, so I was able to go on a little spiritual um, trip, I suppose. No, it's not really super spiritual, but come on. Anime gaming, that's a, I guess on a certain level, like, that's spiritual to most people. Especially if you enjoy it as much as I do. But that's neither here nor there. Getting back to it. Um, gosh, Conquest was so bad. <laughs> From what I read, um, for the third day, besides the other people that were there, Rudu Sama was someone that I wanted to go see, and then Akihirist and Joey the Anime Man were there as well on the third day. So, I was thinking, let's get there a little early, let's try to get some slots taken for the meet and greets and whatnot, so that I get a little something to take home for a friend of mine who was not able to come. Maybe some merch, maybe a signature, maybe a picture, whatever. Whatever is allowed, you know? We get there... I want to say, like... Uh, 8 or 9, like a few hours before SM opens. Because if you're not a resident of the Philippines, I don't know if SM is a... mall chain that is in any other country. But it's all across the Philippines almost. And... The store branches are usually open up around 10 a.m. every day, unless they change it for a holiday, something like that. Open up a little later, open a little earlier. Um, we got there at that, that time, just so that we would have ample time to get in line, be able to secure our slots for the meet and greets and the um, fan meetups. Once we got there, there was a considerable line there already. So we're like, nothing, no big deal, that's good. This is where we're supposed to be so that we would get our um, bands, our stamps, and all that. Because we already had the tickets with the QRs on them. So we didn't have to pay anything else. So we got those after we made our way inside the SM. And then they told us that we'd have to line at a different place to get inside the halls. 
once we got in line at one place, not even the final place we stayed in line at. When we got in line at that place, we found out that all of the meet and greet slots were taken. Great, right? Can't see anyone that I want to go to. See. So I was like, fine, that's okay, I suppose. Not a big deal because everyone else was there for different reasons. So that was my main reason. Uh, I was like, fine, I'll just go ahead and enjoy the stalls, buy a few pops, maybe buy a few um, goodies and stuff like that instead. After that first line that we went to, because the one that we lined up on was for one of the meet and greet halls, and since we didn't have a meet and greet pass, we would not be let in regardless, even though we waited a line. So we had to transfer ourselves to a different line, and the line, I kid you not, if you can imagine it, was like in between two sections of the mall, because Mall of Asia is humongous. I have not seen a mall that big in my entire life and I probably will not see Mall of Asia for a long while. <laughs> I don't know when I'll do that to uh, pass away. Hopefully another country is coming soon. Another country I missed the Jonas Brothers did. Okay, getting off topic. Um, we get there. One side is like a bunch of restaurants. The other side is the, the hall where we're supposed to go into. So imagine that, that, um, that kind of um, space in between. This end is another part of the mall, this end leads to the street, and there's the pathway. So there's like a church on the other side, there's a bunch of other buildings on the other side that's not connected to the mall. That leads to the greater pathway. So, we were in line, like this, like a snake. You just get into the hall. I don't even know exactly how many links we made. I think we made like 10 links of, let's say, conservative estimate. 25 per person in one link. So that's exactly how many people we're trying to get in. And the reason why we waited so long outside was that they overbooked the convention to the point where they still sold tickets even though there were people who already bought tickets up front like me because I bought that uh, I bought the 30 tickets I got for my friends like a, I want to say a month or so in advance and then We were saying it on the site like, we will think about it, we will see if we will still be selling on site, but for the most part, we see that we are going to sell out online. Uh, we were thinking, okay, so I don't have to get these ASAP then, so then we don't have to worry and that we'll actually be able to get into the hall and stuff like that. There were people that bought tickets on the day, days before, that were able to get in earlier than us. People that had premium passes, people that had three-day passes, people that had VIP passes were in the same line as us. So no one got special treatment except for certain people that came earlier than us. So we were in that line, that snake chain link line, from 10 in the morning until 3 or 4 in the afternoon. It was one of the most harrowing experiences in my life. I swear I have PTSD when it comes to lines. I can't stand in a long line. Whenever I have to get into a long line, I'll just tell my friend kindly that's with me. I cannot stand this line with you. I will just stay somewhere else and not look at the line. The most that I can wait, probably five people. I can't get in a line that's 10 people in the boat. That's how bad it um, messed with me. Because if you've never been to Manila, if you've never been to Southeast Asia in general, it's a hot mess. <laughs> to say at least, to be polite. Manila on the best of days reaches um, the upper 30s, 40, maybe even mid 40s. And that was before 
the whole heat index thing as well as a plate. The whole heat index thing thankfully has gone away. We're now starting to get in the rainy season. I'm starting to get my beloved cold back. I love it. Because um, Bogio was starting to get into the territories of 30 degrees, almost higher a day. We would average 20, 20, um, 24, 26 a day, which is not good. Especially for me, that's used to the cold, so it's not good. I was already wearing my usual garb, my tank top, my shorts. I was still hot. It's close. So, of course, when we went down to Manila, I put it on real quick. No jeans, no jogging pants, no cotton pants, no pants whatsoever. I'm going to wear shorts. I don't care if they hug my skin or if they are loose, I will wear shorts. For the shirt, I still have a few XL shirts around. I will wear XL shirts, light collars, so that... I would not stick any sweat to myself, get any more hot, as well as not absorb more heat than I should. So that's one of the few positives from the trip. Me being prepared to go to Manila, even though it was my first trip to go down there. All my melons and no family, whatever. So, let's say conservatively, because I remember checking the weather app as well when we were in that line. That very move that only moved at the end when other people got tired of staying inside the hall and when uh, some of the managers and some of the other guards were telling these people to exit and let other people do get inside and see the event at least just a little bit so let's say maybe like 40, 42 degrees we were sitting and standing and dying under the lovely Manila sun, <laughs> the humid air. What else can I use this magic to Manila? <laughs> um, because honestly, even for example, if I have not slept that much, I'm able to sleep still, even though I'm readjusting my body clock now. When I would go to um, work in school in my uni, I would have to get there sometimes at the earliest, uh, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So I would usually wake up 4 or 5 in the morning, and sometimes, if I'm not an old man and I'm already asleep at like 9 or 10, sometimes I push myself, get myself a little bit more enjoyment out of my life, <laughs> sleep 11, 12. So even if I get a few hours of sleep, I'm usually still hungry dory. Even if I don't eat breakfast, I've been doing that for my intermittent uh, fasting. I'm so fine. I'm so good. That um, experience really tested my limits. Almost kicked my ass. There were a couple of times I almost passed out, or a couple of times that I almost just fell first on the ground from exhaustion, from dehydration, from just general uncomfortability of the whole situation. Threat neutralized. Big ups to James and everyone that was with us. We even had a friend that joined us from uh, Manila that was someone that I'd never met before. They bought us lunch in line. We had no choice, obviously. We, instead of going somewhere to eat lunch, we were already there 10. So we had to staying in line. Some people stayed in the line, some people went to buy food, and then we'd switch that out. They stayed in line that time, we went to buy cold water, and then we'd make some to do that every few hours or so, just so that we would be still functioning human beings. I remember someone feeding me pasta at one point, someone feeding me a nice cold water bottle. I don't remember if I still have that water bottle. Because I retired it from active use. Because <laughs> I used it for a lot. A long, long time. This is the water bottle that changed my life. 
There's a little um, LGBT sticker on it now, thanks to some of my friends at the office. This cold water bottle of mint Puega really saved my life. <laughs> well, cold water in that um, nastiness that we went through felt like absolute heaven. <laughs> Not only did it hydrate me, but it just woke my system up a lot. So. really helped out a good bit, honestly. So yeah, besides this thing, I have a few more other things. Just to show off some positives, I suppose. From this. I have an art book here somewhere. As we are looking at that lovely zombie screen thing, I am... I don't want to sit one on the horn. But we're close to the city. <laughs> Never ever happened yet. For me, you've got some money. Yeah, here's one of the things that I bought from uh, one of the local artists that was there. It's not even someone that I follow at all. I just saw the art, I just saw how lovely it was. I bought a postcard of them and I thought let me get the full art book experience from this guy because this guy's art is magnificent but look at that. Absolutely beautiful. If I remember correctly I have an absolute favorite in this somewhere. These are really good too. I'm not gonna show the whole thing obviously. And we have one more, one more here. Let's see. There we are. Stunning. Beautiful, look at that. It's amazing that what um, people can do. If you've ever. There we go, we're finally done with that. If you've ever seen it, made it to 48, which is pretty good, honestly. The highest I've, I think the highest I posted was the one that was on the channel 42 or something like that maybe. So yeah, there you go. Mr. Peggy uh, Mr. Peggy Abia. I haven't said his name in a while, so sorry. Manumanai, I don't remember what Manumanai means. There you go. Studio Konwari, you can also follow his little ad. His little sprite guy is a little cute too. He even signed uh, one of the things for me on the back here, I remember now. Thanks so much. This is the bunny insignia there, really cool. Love it. Okay. So yeah. I guess I have to wrap up the story a little bit. So, after we went through that, <laughs> we went through everything. I tried my best to enjoy it as much as I could. Everyone was all pooped out. Everyone was just sitting down on the floor. I tried to get pictures. I tried to get um, licks in on the stalls and on the cosplayers that were there. Um, we went to the food court for Malavija afterwards as well. It's just me messing around with the creative glass. I'll record this so that we can talk a little bit more. And then I had some sushi that time. Loved it. And then after that, you went straight home, technically, <laughs> because your boy accidentally started playing the 1975 on the drive, and I did not curate it to make it all fast songs, because it was playing slow songs, my boy James was getting sleepy, I apologize once again James if you're watching this for that, it was like, he had to pause the song <laughs> playing, he had to drive us to a nearby gas station where we all slept for the night. And yeah, thank you all so much for joining me. Little time to rant, little time to talk with all y'all. And I hope you'll enjoy it if you're still here until the end. Thank you all so much once again for 2,000 subscribers. I will announce a giveaway winner soon because I thought this was going to go a little longer. But save it for a different video. And when I say winners, not only will someone get a key for New Vegas, someone else will get a key for 76. Brand new, brand new revelations, you love it. You only heard it here first, eh? 
So for me, who was playing World at War, and for me now, who's been talking to you all this time, thank you so much. I love you. Goodbye.